Call to order for zoning appeals for Monday, October 9th, 2023. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from September 25th, 2023. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. King, second by Mrs. Peters to approve. Minutes as is. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5 0. Do we have any special requests or continuances? We do not. Seeing none, we'll move to findings of fact. First up is BCA 2023-036, Petitioner Austin Barker for 165 South Max. Chairman, in consideration of statutory criteria, I that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as a final decision and final action for various petition number BCA 2023-036. Motion by Mr. Peters, second by Mr. Mull. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, say sign. That motion carries 5-0. Next up is BCA 2023-037, Petitioner Joe Tien, Tien for 100 Bird Way. Mr. Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number BCA 2023-037. Motion by Mr. King, second by Mr. Milborn. All in favor raise your right hand. Also the same sign. That motion carries 5-0. BCA 2023-038, Petitioner Justin Olashuk on behalf of GLA Properties for 2955 Allen Road. Mr. Chairman, in consideration of the statutory criteria, I move that we adopt the written findings of fact as presented, incorporating the evidence submitted into the record as our final decision and final action for variance petition number BCA 2023-038. Motion by Mr. Small, second by Mr. King. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5-0. Next up, we have no old business. Old business from the floor. Seeing none, we'll move to new business, which is BCA 2023-039, a development standards variance for 303 Sheik Road. Petitioner is Michelle Affronti. On behalf of Amarok LLC, they are requesting relief from two sections of the Unified Development Ordinance. Number one, fences and screens and materials to allow a fence to contain an electric charge. And number two, fences and screens height to allow a 10 foot fence in a commercial zoning district. Uh, I believe we have our petitioner online. Is that correct? No, we cannot hear you though. Uh, there we go. How's that? That's much better. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, sir, let me make sure do we have all the notices and receipts in order. Everything is in order and on file. And I have submitted certified copies of the comprehensive plan and the unified development ordinance into the record. All right. Sir, name and address for the record. My name is Michael Pate. I live at 315 South Maple Street in Columbia, South Carolina. And Mr. Pate, I'm going to have you get sworn in by our secretary, if you would, please. Do you swear in the Mrs. Perjury? That's my doctor of true investor knowledge. I do. All right. Mr. Pate, tell us why you are here. Uh, I'm here representing the customer, our customer, your constituent, Ann Amarok. I'm here basically to explain the system to you, what it does and how it works. Um, we have been contacted to install this system. Basically, all operates on a 12-volt battery. <clears throat> so we take a 12-volt battery and we amplify the 12 volts over 1.1 seconds to seven to 9,000 volts. Once that's achieved, the energizer mechanically must release that energy down the interior line back to the alarm panel. It does that in three ten thousandths of a second. If the alarm panel receives negative returns for five consecutive pulses, five, then it sets off the alarm locally audibly on the site and we also go back to our call center and we start going through a call list so the night managers number one the day managers number two the owners number three we go through the list until we get somebody to confirm the alarm so we have cameras associated with these items so you can sit at home on your wi-fi and look at that particular line so if there's a an accident on that line say a big storm came up a tree knocked down a corner of that line so button it all back up, guys, and go back to bed. We're okay. Or I've got five guys in hoodies with a flatbed truck. They're robbing me blind. Please call the local police department. That's a verified 
alarm. Police like verified alarms. They know where to go. They know what to expect. So the electrification is really a pulse. It's safe, it's reliable. We test these devices to the international standard for electrical pulse devices, IEC 60335-2-76. Our manufacturing facility is audited by an OSHA approved NERDL. That's a nationally recognized testing laboratory, UL being the one that everyone knows. So these, are, these devices are safe and reliable. It's actually not even really electricity. It's a pulse power surge that's not even covered by the National Electric Code. It's a very unusual technology. So that's what we do. The reason we need 10 feet in height, it's very simple. If you have a perimeter fence this tall and we're at the exact same height, someone's just going to stand on that perimeter and drop in, do their dirty little deeds, go out. When they hit the gate on the way out, break the seal, the alarm goes off, but they've already done their criminal activity. If they were a little higher, three strands of wire, they're not going over that. That gets you to 10 feet. 10 feet is a long way for someone to jump over the top and come down and hit concrete, or for that matter, any kind of ground. You're just not going to survive that without an injury. That's why the height is critical and important to us. We stop theft, not only on that site, but in that neighborhood, because for that particular site, there are areas of egress that criminals use and we stop that from happening. So we make the neighborhood safer. So that's what we do. Um, that's why we're asking for the variance here tonight. And I'm here to answer any of your questions. Okay, and before we get to uh, the board's questions, um, let's. You, do you have your statement of reasons, the answer to your statement of reasons with you by chance? I don't have it right in front of me. No, started to bring you up on another screen, and I don't want to do that because I'm on a brand new computer tonight. Okay. Well, and I don't want to get off of it. Um, I, can, I, can I read what he submitted and have him confirm? I mean, you're not supposed to testify on your behalf. It is their actual testimony. Yeah, so we could. Go you could through. enter it into the record and say, as submitted written. in their you know, petitioner's written statement of reason supporting the criteria, and enter that into the record. So if I read through it to enter in the record and then ask him if he has anything he wants to add or change to it, that would be acceptable? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, sir, I will read what you responded with. And this applies to both variance requests, I believe. You have one answer for both. I believe. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, so for number one, the approval will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. You, the, the written response was that the proposed security system enhances the health, safety, and welfare of persons by improving workplace safety and discouraging criminals from targeting the subject property and committing other crimes of opportunity in the neighborhood. The utilization of the proposed security system will not be detrimental to the public welfare, no injurious to the property or improvements in the neighborhood. Instead, the safety and general welfare of the neighborhood is enhanced through crime prevention. Another benefit is that police resources can be used elsewhere for life safety issues rather than expended on property crimes. Mr. Pay, do you agree with that or do you have anything to add to that? Yes, I agree with that. And it goes back to my original statement where we have a tested and labeled product that was not injurious to anybody at all. So yes, we agree with that. Number two, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property, including the variance, will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner because the written response was, there is no change to the existing use and no new use is being proposed. Therefore, there will be no impact on streets, highways, and pavement type. The areas adjacent to the variance property are zoned interstate commercial, interstate large, interstate medium, residential mixed use, and residential medium lot. The security fence will in no way adversely affect the surrounding area. Rather, to the contrary, the security fence enhances the vicinity by effectively deterring crime. Lower crime equals higher property values and safer residents, which in turn increases revenue to the city. Appellate affirms there will be no effect whatsoever on the use of the adjacent properties. The system is virtually invisible to passing vehicular traffic, so there's no impact on aesthetics in the area. The variance request is to allow for a 10-foot tall, 12-volt DC battery powered pulse security system fence behind an existing perimeter fence. Again, do you agree that that was your written response? Do you have anything to add? 
Absolutely, we agree. It's safe, reliable, will not affect anybody in the neighborhood and practically invisible to anyone who drives by. Okay. Number three, the strict application of the terms of zoning ordinance will result in practical difficulties in the use of the property because, and the written answer was, by preventing the business from having the security they need to keep out criminals and crime, the business will continue to experience mounting losses that are unsustainable. Code already allows for six foot height of fences. The pellet is requesting four more feet to go to a total height of 10 feet behind an existing perimeter fence. More than 30 years of security industry experience definitively shows that a height of 10 feet effectively deters crime, whereas lower heights still allow determined criminals the ability to get over the fence and continue plundering the business. Appellate is not aware of any other RV companies nearby making this site business unique. The business is located along a major interstate. Because the business has a significant number of vehicles, they are targeted by criminals to steal catalytic converters, batteries, tow campers, and any other auto parts which can be quickly and easily sold on the black market or to metal recyclers. These mounting losses are unsustainable to the business, even with their proactive approach through various security measures, including guards and cameras that have not deterred brazen criminals. Thefts of tow RVs and catalytic converters continues to negatively impact the business. Camping World needs to propose security systems slash fence to protect themselves from crime. We cannot imagine our request not being approved. The system is deployed in thousands of locations across the United States going back more than 30 years. It is a well-known commodity and we look forward to the city approving this request. Again, will you acknowledge that as your written response and do you have anything to add? No, sir, that's all true and um, fairly encapsulates everything we're trying to do. Okay, and then number four, the structure is not regulated under Indiana Code 8-21-10-3 for hazard care navigation. Uh, do you have anything else to add before I ask staff for their comments? No, sir, that's that's sufficient. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pate. Mr. Nelson? Mr. Claudi? No. Uh, no, I mean, staff agrees with the petitioner's statements. Uh, and I'll be honest here in the explanation on how the fence works. I am more comfortable than thinking it more of like a giant cow fence. Yep. Um, I've, I've seen some pictures too. I think those were included in staff report. It's a minimally visible kind of distance. So I did not include a recommendation, but I'd be inclined to be in favor. Okay. I think one thing I talked to the owner before this meeting uh, as possibly a proposed condition of the variance if you choose to accept it. And um, I did copy uh, Michelle in the email, so I'm not sure if the petitioner here has seen the email yet. But uh, we did notice that there is barbed wire uh, along the existing fence, and in some areas, it appears to be within three feet of a sidewalk, uh, which is a safety concern of the city. And it's also um, uh, prohibited in Section 6. Uh, dash three two nine, uh, which talks about barbed wire. Um, the owner was comfortable with as a condition of this being approved. If you guys choose to approve it, uh, removing barbed wire, uh, existing barbed wire fence in areas that is within three feet of the sidewalk. Uh, so if you would be so inclined uh, to add that as a condition, um, that's up to you. Mr. Pate, any comments towards that? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, we're, we're not opposed to that condition at all. As a matter of fact, sometimes the barbed wire, if it's not properly constructed and put on actual angled bars to the outside of the fence, can actually inhibit our device from working properly. And obviously, if it's against the, uh, the local ordinance and rules, we want it down. So we have no problem at all taking down the barbed wire. None. Okay. With that, I'll close the public hearing. Open it up to the board. Mr. Mole, any questions? A couple. Uh, yeah, so thank you for clarifying the electrical charge thing. So uh, is the electrical charge part, is it the top of the fence or is it the entire fence that sends that pulse out? Well, it's actually two separate structures. So you have a perimeter fence up and we're inside of it. So okay. we've, got a, we've got a structure inside of it that's 20 strands of wire four inches of separation up to about four feet. After that, it's eight inches of separation. These wires are for nothing to, but to run a charge through. You cannot climb this. You cannot climb this device. It's tension wire, so it's gonna drop. So it's basically a security system. 
so it's inside the fence line or the perimeter barrier. So someone actually has to be creating a trespassing situation or actually trespassing to hit it. You can't run your fingers through there and grab it at all. So you have to go over the outside fence and then go through this, which would trigger the alarm. Correct. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. Just to clarify, you could not, you know, be on the sidewalk and trip and, and then fall into it. You would have to intentionally uh, scale a fence and drop then, back down, and then you would run into the tension wires. Okay. So well, that that that's a little off because they're actually a little tighter than that. So they're four to eight inches apart. The standard right. tells us they must be 200, 100 to 200 millimeters apart, which sketches out to about four to eight inches. You know, it's really not. It's 3.76 to 7.89 or something like that. It's, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's But four to eight inches is the separation the aperture of the perimeter fence wall must be at least a minimum or the, I'm sorry, a maximum of 2.25 inches. So no one can really get your hand in there, not even a child. A child can get their hand through there, but maybe not, you know, past the elbow. They're not being able to touch it. And the areas we install, children aren't walking down these streets in the middle of the night. But there's not enough charge at all for them to, if they were able to get their fingers in, it's actually like get electric or, a, or get like a shock or well the the shock is this if you have your stocking feet on in your house and you scrub them across the carpet run up into a door handle and put your hand out and get a shock that's a 15,000 volt static shock we're not even that powerful and you can actually see a spark sometimes in your house when you do that so that is the static shock or the equivalent of what we do so we're just trying to warn somebody not to do this again if they do and they manage to tear it down or cut it off we set the alarms off so it's at least two points on the perimeter which we're trying to, to deflect, deflect criminal activity and then as far as the fencing itself go are, so are you because it looks like the there's, there's examples in the staff report those fence examples it looks like they're maybe eight feet according to like look at the big the pickup trucks that are on the picture and there's wiring above it as well is that part of like your example of what you guys would do is like that wiring across the top of that fence or well see that that wiring is actually on the second structure so you really can't see the wire behind the existing perimeter fence because it's a little smaller than the wire on the chain link and it's a little smaller in diameter it's incredibly difficult to see driving by or really even walking unless you're looking for it. We have warning signs on it, you know, about the size of a, a legal pad, same color, bright yellow, black hand, lightning bolt through it, international sign for shock, warning, 7,000 volts in English and Spanish, the two languages we always print on every 10 meters or 30 feet on the device so you can actually see these that's the only thing that really sets it off are the signs if the signs weren't there it'd be very difficult to see okay so i guess sorry to ask a million questions oh, uh that's okay just so the so what the the main fence that they're asking to build is it's already there it's already there yes sir it already exists so this it is already exists on behind it going yeah. behind it Oh, I thought this was replacing yeah. the six yeah. foot that's all the way around. No, that. no. <laughs> Completely different structure behind that. the existing yeah. fence. Okay, because I was just curious because it looked like on the the diagram it was going to actually expand towards the uh, Audi Golf area. Mm -hmm. And there's no fence. I don't remember seeing a fence over there when I drove by. Okay. Oh, the fence ends. The fence ends. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the south part of it. Okay. That's, I, I, did, I guess I was a little confused about how the the diagram was showing. I mean, the uh, yeah, plan uh, does show a, a, a this on the south end, but oh, it's it just there. It off. I just let that go. It's off the property line. But... Okay, I, I was just went look went by there. I noticed that part of it wasn't already fenced in. I didn't know this was to build a fence all the way around the entire structure, the the, the entire property. Correct. There will be a perimeter fence. 
around the entire property. And there'll be, be a separate second structure built inside of the uh, perimeter fence, the electric guard dog. So, so you, okay. on Sheep Road, <clears throat> the fence is up against basically the sidewalk, and then it goes back, and they have a parking area with RVs. So that's not going to be part of it. And the fence goes back that way, so it's uh, it, it's halfway, you know where the existing building is on the site? Mm -hmm. It's halfway back on that building. Okay. It continues. Um, there, was, there was campers all out in that parking lot. That's why I was just curious if it was going across the property line all the way down the sheet. Those ones would be unprotected. They have no fence in front of those at this time. Okay, so that's not part of that 10 foot. Yeah, it'd be behind. Um, the fence is uh, back. It sits back. It sits yeah. back a, a distance. Okay. You can see it on page. This is, this is, a, this is the first blueprint type map. See where the building is, and the fence that comes out from the middle of the building. Yeah, so sheep's down. Yeah, sheep road. Yeah, sheep road. Back. This is part of you it. see Sheep Road? Yeah. And then if you go up, if you see the fence coming off the building. Okay. I, I didn't know. I guess I was just wanted to make sure I understood where the fence was going. Okay. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Mr. Miller? So from the first fence to the next fence, you're saying it's four to eight inches? Correct. Okay. Well, back in my day, I could have pole vaulted over that. <laughs> <laughs> you're a good pole vaulter. <laughs> I, I was. <clears throat> uh, no, I don't have anything else. <laughs> we, not, we don't want to give people ideas. No. <laughs> Mr. <Miller>. Well, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Angle, yeah. Mr. King? No, I don't have any questions. Ms. Peters? No, I think I've been. Yeah, all my answers were, all my questions were answered, both in the testimony and uh, Mr. Bowles' questions. So, uh, all right, with that, I will take a motion to admit all the evidence in the record. Chairman, I move that we admit all the evidence presented in regard to this matter, including the notices, receipts, maps, photographs, written documents, petitioner's application and attachments. Petitioner's detailed statement of reasons, the staff report prepared by the planning department, certified copies of the unified development ordinance and comprehensive plan, testimony of the petitioners, city planning staff, and any remonstrators, and all other exhibits presented, be they oral or written, for consideration by this board in regard to this petition, and to include the testimony of those present this evening. First one, Ms. Peters, second one, Mr. King. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, say sign. That motion carries 5-0. I'll take a motion on request number one to allow a fence to contain electrical charge. Can we ask if there are any monsters since I see there was like five people online? I did not. I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss that. I just wasn't sure that we had five people there. Is there, is there six, anyone there online that was online. not acknowledged or wanted to speak? Seeing none, we'll move on. All right, motion on request number one. I move that we approve it. Uh, with the condition, <coughs> excuse me, with the condition of removing the barbed wire. I think it was removal of areas of the existing barbed wire fence that are within three feet of the public sidewalk. Sounds good. Is that right? Yeah, along the base. Well, it's. It's, you know, yeah, yeah, because it's on the fence. They have the, that's that's the part you're talking about, right? Yeah, they have some at the top, and then they also have, like, the, the bales, like, the circular barbed wire on the bottom, and it's, it, along Sheep Road, it does get pretty close to the sidewalk, so that was the area I was talking about, the, the parts that are within three feet of the sidewalk. Right? Removal of barbed wire fence within three feet of public sidewalk. Is the condition proposed? I don't yes. want to put that in anybody's yeah. opinion. That is your, yeah, okay. And that's for request number one. And that's for request number one. So I have a motion to approve with the condition of the removal of barbed wire fencing within three feet of the public sidewalk. Do I have a second? Mr. Mull, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, send sign. That motion carries 5 0. 
request number two to allow a 10 foot fence to commercially zone partial. Parcel, not partial, parcel. Uh, we have to repeat that condition on the second. Shall we put the condition on both? Yes. Okay. Uh, I move to approve the request with the previously stated condition. Second. First by Mr. King, second by Mrs. Peters. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5 0. Sorry, Sean, I decided to change. Most of the direct purpose of council to draft the findings of fact. Mr. Chairman, that consideration, I have considered the statutory criteria of moving the direct appropriations council office to draft written findings of fact regarding our decision on the variance petition or variance request presented in variance petition number DCA 2023 039. Said findings specifically incorporate the staff report and the evidence submitted in the record for consideration and adoption by the Board of Zoning Appeals in our final decision. And final action regarding this petition in the next motion by Mr. Moe, second by Mr. Milborn. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries 5 0. Mr. Pate, um, you're welcome to proceed, although we will take final action here to the board planning staff to get everything moving forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, any new business from the floor? Seeing none. Any announcements? I probably should have said this. Earlier, if you're online for the pumpkin stand variants, um, those were not supposed to be sent out in the mail for today. Uh, that will be next month, the first meeting in November, which is November 13th. Uh, we'll be working with the petitioner to resend those notices. Uh, so sorry if you were online for that petition. Okay. Right. Shall I no, move, sir? Uh, Motion to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned. Stop the recording.